Hey guys, Chris Fix here. Today I'm going to show you what the inside of an engine looks like when it has a head gasket leak. I have my 2002 PT Cruiser. The head gasket had a leak and then the engine overheated and the engine blew up. So we're going to look inside each of these spark plug holes with a special bore scope camera where a normal camera can't fit. And you'll really get an in-depth view of what a normal cylinder should look like and then what a cylinder with a head gasket leak looks like and also a cylinder that is melted. So let's get to it. This is a straight four engine. You can see cylinder one, two, three, and four. We're gonna go to cylinder one first, so I'm gonna switch over from this camera to my endoscope camera. We'll go in through the spark plug hole. You can see this cylinder is at the top of its stroke, so we wanna get a good glimpse of this. I'm gonna turn the engine. Now that the piston's down, we can take a look here and there's a good amount of carbon buildup. And some of that actually looks like it might be metal filings. This engine did overheat. As we take a look around, there's carbon on the piston rings. And the sidewalls are smooth. I don't see any of the factory cross hatching. This doesn't really give you a good idea what a good running engine looks like. So we'll take a look at my truck. My truck will be a good example of what a normal cylinder looks like. We're going to be going into the number one cylinder on the passenger side. The spark plug on this is not up and down like in a straight four. Since this is a V6, the spark plug goes in at an angle. So we're going to get a half cylinder wall, half top of the piston look. You can see the cylinder wall has cross hatching from the factory, which is pretty awesome for a truck that has 120,000 miles. You can see that line at the top. It's kind of a dark line. That's the top of the stroke for the cylinder. And just to give you an idea, the cylinder is about halfway up its stroke. That line all the way at the top there is where the head meets the block. That's where you would have a head gasket leak if you had one, but this engine's in tip-top shape. And then you can see here the carbon deposits on the cylinder. This is typical. There's not an oil leak. There's no head gasket leak. This would not be considered a dirty engine. It would be considered a relatively clean engine. So I just wanted to show you that so you have a comparison. Now we're back at the PT Cruiser, and we're going to have to turn the engine to get the number two piston to go down. So we'll turn the engine. With the number two piston at the bottom of its stroke, we'll go in. Right away you can see this cylinder is a lot cleaner compared to cylinder number one. This is because there's a head gasket leak. The leaking coolant into the cylinder steam cleans the engine, makes it really clean, as you could tell. Just for reference, because it's easier to see now, those two bottom grooves in the piston are indents in the piston surface for the valves. So there's clearance for when the valves open up, it won't hit the piston. And that line right across the top, that's just like a, a hill or a mound in the piston. It's designed for a certain airflow in the cylinder and a certain compression ratio. So I'm going to show you the piston ring, which slides along the cylinder wall, and we'll look for any damage. The cylinder wall looks good and smooth. But we don't see any crosshatch markings from when they bore the engine out in the factory, which indicates the engine is wearing. It has 80,000 miles. You saw my truck that had crosshatching in the cylinder, and I had 120,000 miles. But remember, this engine did overheat, so who knows what that did to the cylinder. There's a mark right here. It looks like a bent or a nicked piston ring. The piston ring should be tight against the cylinder wall all the way around. This little nick will affect your compression, and it's something you don't want to see. As we continue to go around, the rest of the cylinder looks pretty typical. Nothing stands out. Here's the tall part of the piston that I was talking about, kind of like a hill. And we're coming back around to where we started. Now let's take a look at cylinder 3. Cylinder 3 should be in the down position as well, because cylinder 1 and 4 will be up when cylinder 2 and 3 will be down, and vice versa. Here's cylinder 3, and right away you can see this looks different than the other cylinders. On the right side, you see this lighter color area. This is because the piston melted. This piston should be interesting to look at. Let's start looking at the valve indents and then move our way over to that melted area. Right there you can see the piston ring is melted or it's come apart. It's hard to tell on camera, but something happened that isn't good. And then right next to that spot, you can see this piston is completely melted. You can actually see more of the piston ring here because that piston is melted away. You could also see, besides the melting, there are scuffs along the cylinder wall, which is not good. We'll just quickly make our way around this cylinder, see if there's any other anomalies. It all looks relatively normal, especially for a melted piston. And now we're back where we started. 
And in this cylinder we saw there's a head gasket leak. The piston actually melted, so I don't know if any of you have ever seen a melted piston before, but that's really neat to see. And there was definitely some scuffing on the cylinder walls. So let's get out of cylinder number three and check out this last cylinder, cylinder number four. See what's going on in here. Because cylinders two and three are down, we have cylinders one and four up, so we're gonna have to turn the engine. With this piston at the bottom of its stroke, we have a good glimpse of the cylinder and the cylinder walls, and you can see this cylinder also had a head gasket leak. There's some debris to the left, might be metal shavings, might be broken up carbon, who knows. We'll take a quick look at the cylinder wall here, and you can see there's scuffing as we make our way around. It looks pretty normal, that's the rise in the piston. Right here it looks like the piston actually might have melted slightly. It's not as bad as cylinder number three, and uh, that's really all that's going on in this cylinder. And there you go. Now you got to see the inside of an engine that has a head gasket leak. Not something you get to see every day. Hopefully you learned something new. And if you liked the video, remember to give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. For this video, there's not really a top tip I could give you. So what we're going to do instead is I'm going to show you the inside of different engines. First engine is going to be my Corvette engine here. This is a 1996 Corvette. It's a 350 cubic inch, 5.7 liter engine. The vet has about 90,000 miles on it. Here's the first cylinder, cylinder number two on the passenger side. At the top we can see the valves, they're the orangish color. The exhaust valve is slightly open on the left because we're at the top of the stroke and this is an exhaust stroke. The valves look nice and clean. If we look around, you can see the cylinder looks pretty clean. There is some carbon buildup on the outside of the piston. A little fuel cleaner will probably help that out, but it's nothing bad. The middle of the piston seems pretty good. You can see that orange on the piston. That's actually a reflection from the valves because it's pretty clean over there. And that's the inside of a Corvette engine. Now we're going to take a look at a 2008 Mercury Milan. Let's quickly check out cylinder one. This engine has 20,000 miles, it's a straight four, used mostly for short trips, so you would think carbon buildup might be a little bit higher. And we look, you could see the piston actually looks really clean. I don't see any carbon buildup. That little pattern that you see there where it's shiny, that's probably from the spray pattern of the fuel injector. It's clean there because some of the fuel gets hit there and then it burns up, constantly cleaning that area. But again, looks pretty good, just to give you a quick idea of another engine. So this will be an interesting one, a little bit of contrast. We got a lawnmower engine. We'll go inside here and check it out. So I'll just pull the pull string a little bit to move the piston back so you can see what this lawnmower piston looks like. You can see at the bottom here where the two valve cutouts are, nice and clean. That's because it's a carbureted engine so the fuel cleans that area and the top of the piston is kind of dirty. If you have any ideas of how else I could use my bore scope, just comment below, something you might want to see. Maybe you want to see me do a fuel treatment and a before and after, or maybe you want to see me do decarbonizing an engine with water and a before and after to see if this stuff actually works. I'm sure you guys have plenty of cool ideas. Definitely comment below, let me know, and I'll, uh, I'll make some more videos using this camera. It's pretty cool. Get to see things you don't normally see.